What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I have a very, very, very special guest. Her name is Ashley Robinson. She's a senior AI consultant, generative AI model developer, and an AI optimization expert. But she can tell you better than I can. Ashley, welcome. I, I'm, I feel great talking to you and speaking with to you and just uh, willing to share your knowledge with the world. I, I love it. Yeah, hey, it's an honor and pleasure to be here. And just as Justin said, he said it perfectly, my expertise is in AI solutions, so especially in generative AI. So essentially, I help both people on the corporate side and also businesses be able to leverage AI automations and, of course, career development. So I'm excited to get started. I mean, the future is changing at an accelerated pace, so it's time that <laughs> we can all, you know, rapidly adapt. But I also do believe that there is going to be a better world. So as a matter of fact, um, we'll be touching on this a little bit later, but also being a startup founder of a wearable technology startup specifically, um, this is you know just a goal of being at the forefront of the future. So I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to also discuss exactly how everybody can adapt, but also win in the AI era and revolution. That's great. I'm glad you mentioned that. So I think first things first, the general public, like the average person, kind of knows a little bit about AI. But now I'm hearing all these rumblings about AGI. What is AGI exactly? I love this topic. It's probably my favorite one ever. So AGI is artificial general intelligence. So we can assume that it is an AI that is going to be as competent as a human being. So imagine it being able to replace the doctors, the lawyers, and the engineers in any other role in the world. And so a lot of people do say that AGI is going to be predicted in the future to come as of 2030. However, there are key leaders such as Sam Altman that say that AGI is already here. So imagine that. And what's coming up next is going to be artificial super intelligence. And that's just next level mind blowing stuff. <laughs> yeah, this sounds like a, a lot of good things in my ear. Now, <laughs> I, I love it because, you know, I love advancement. I love efficiency. I love... Uh, just making people's lives overall much more easier and seamless. Yes. With that, you know, we're going to play devil's advocate. What do you think about like how much the government, how much government oversight should there be in the development of AI and AGI systems? And our current regulatory approaches, you know, are they stifling innovation, like holding back technology? Or do they fail to sufficiently uh, protest society? Like, you know, where, where do they stand on that? Well, Justin, this is a great segue and also a great question. So what is the current regulatory environment? So right now we're at a place where the U.S. is doing different things than the rest of the world is. So, for example, as a matter of fact, as of last year, 2024, nearly 700 AI bills were actually signed and introduced in the 45 states. And so essentially, this is the goal to be able to enact different laws and regulations. However, we're now in 2025. And that means a new regulation and a new, you know, president. And so President Trump has now actually signed a bill where he is, you know, prioritizing innovation. And with that, it is more so of a deregulatory focus. And so where the world, for example, is focusing on AI ethics <laughs> and controlling that with regulation for safety, the yeah. U.S. instead is prioritizing that we are accelerating growth and innovation. As a matter of fact, this particular executive order, it's called Executive Order 141 seven nine specifically if you guys want to look that up so this is actually the goal to remove barriers to american leaders removing their i'm sorry removing barriers to american leadership in artificial intelligence so essentially we can imagine a future where the rest of the world is going to have these implementations where they're going to prioritize safety efficiency and of course ethics and the us you know is perhaps going to be a little left behind in that regard so what do you think, Justin? I think, you know, it's kind of like you have a loaded gun and you just don't know how to use it and you're shooting yourself in the foot. So I think, you know, Western, we just have to be more open to collaborate. I think collaboration is key. I, you know, I, I'm all about collaboration and I think we need to find a resolution to 
how we can work together as a plan tit for tat. But, you know, these presidents are both Gemini's and me being a Gemini's myself, I know it's not going to be, it's pretty much not going to happen. But um, now with the ethics of AI decision making, like, should AI systems be allowed to make life altering decisions, like without human insight? Like, and if so, what under what, under what circumstances? And how can we assure human accountability without undermining speed and efficiency that AI offers? Ooh, another excellent question, Justin. So I believe this is going to require a multifaceted approach. So just now, AI isn't quite at the level to where it can make advanced decisions, life-changing decisions for the world. However, one day it will be. And so I would say that a safe approach is going to be an 80-20% approach. So that means that we're going to require human oversight. So we'll say that, you know, humans are going to be able to really oversee the 20% and then AI is going to be able to to do the rest of the 80. So as far as it goes to, you know, how this is going to look into the future, then obviously it's going to be tied to our state regulations. So the U.S., instead of it being either instead of them joining the global <laughs> group for, you know, ethics in this case, um, the U.S. is really taking an individual approach. And so we can see that different states are going to enact different laws. And so with that, it's going to take the power of the individual to make decisions, to be able to control not only what they're building with AI, but also to control the ethics and the regulatory frameworks that are going to be implemented. All right. Okay. That makes makes perfect sense. Just looking over, looking at the overall better society and wanting it to be better. So I, I think that's really good. And speaking about better, better boosts. We, this is we we know you're an expert in AI and AGI, but the people need to know about better boosts. What is better boosts? Yes. So Better Boost is a wearable technology startup. And so our goal is to build technology that is engineered to empower you. So you can imagine smart rings that are going to be able to maximize your health and wellness, but also augmented reality glasses that are going to be able to maximize your productivity. And we're not stopping there. We actually have our smart translation glasses, which translate 13 different languages globally. And and it has an augmented reality display that could also do navigation. So our main mission is to build a better world through wearable technology solutions. So I'm so glad to really elaborate on exactly our mission in the world and also the next stage of the business as well. I love it. I love it. It's, it's, it's all about connecting people. I need one myself. Uh, and if you're watching this, you need to go to, I'll drop the link in the description and you click better boost and you need to get one today all right now this is all great you know ai the technology what's what it's doing to society but you have other people a little worried about like economic disruption job placement like as ai continues to automate complex tasks right do the benefits of increased productivity outweigh the social costs of widespread displacement as far as like displacement of jobs? And should, should there be policies, strategies put in place for people effective right? transitioning into an AI-driven economy, guessing UBI? What do, what do you think? Absolutely. So UBI, they say, is an excellent solution, universal basic income. Essentially, that is going to be where the government is going to be able to provide a living wage or income for the people whenever, you know, people aren't going to be able to find jobs and be replaced by artificial intelligence. So this could happen sooner than later. However, I always like to say that an alternative solution to UBI, because we're looking at the pros and cons of this. So I want to start off with just some numbers and statistics. So there, there's a positive and there's, there's a negative, right? So the good news is that we can look forward to 97 million new jobs and opportunities coming out in the next couple of years. However, we're going to be losing around 85 million of them. And so it's going to be a give and take. And so I would say that the ultimate solution in the future is going to be what I call profit sharing. And this comes from 
just a bit of background. So I grew up in a small island called Kodiak, Alaska. And so um, in Kodiak, Alaska, we actually had what we call a oil dividend due to the exorbitant oil resources. And so this was a dividend that was received yearly. And so if we could see it applied in the American people context where people could receive, let's say, due to the exorbitant compute resources, where people would be able to make a living just because, you know, UBI would realistically probably, you know, well, it would probably collapse the economy in <laughs> full transparency. The government is struggling enough as it is. Wow. Um, so we need an alternative solution. And so the bottom line for profit sharing would say, okay, all of these businesses, including Meta, Google, et cetera, they're making trillions of dollars off of everyone's data. And I believe that we all deserve a little piece of the pie. And so just as the Alaskan state dividend was implemented due to exorbitant resources with oil. Right in the future, instead of collapsing the economy, there should be an alternative for profit sharing, where instead everybody could receive a piece of the pie. And so this is going to be a necessary discussion that we need to start having at the highest level. Um, and so I do believe that, you know, UBI is a great start. <laughs> However, um, we need to make sure that it's going to be a win-win opportunity for everyone. And so we can see that if profit sharing was implemented, you know, not only would people be able to make, you know, a reasonable living, but also the corporations would also win because we're going to be able to increase their likelihood of success because people are going to be reinvesting into them. But also it means that their perception and the public perception is going to increase positively just because we're looking into a future of a win-win world. We're tired of the win-loss. And yeah. right now it's looking like, you know, the world's going to be taking an L just because we're focusing on the top 1%. However, you know, we need to start having these discussions because it is a collective. And right now, if we're going to build a better world, then we're going to have to do it together. I agree. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's uh, that's great. Oh, man. Um, now, with AGI, I, I love I love everything you said, and you always come with solutions. And that's that's extremely important because I, I, most people harp on the problem and talk about the problem, the problem. But we need to be a solution-based economy and we have tools that's been created to make these solutions and solve these problems in record amounts of time. So with that, the risk of AGI are placing human control. Do we address the essential risk associated with creating a general intelligence, you know, that could surpass human understanding and control, you know, a la iRobot, <laughs> Terminator? Mm -hmm. are, are we moving too too fast in this direction or is the current pace of research and development necessary so we can stay competitive uh, and mm -hmm. solve global challenges or is it just ego? Ooh, that's, that's a great question. So I'll first and foremost start off by recognizing that this is going to require a global approach. So when AGI is coming, a lot of people say that by the year 2030, that AI is going to take over, like you said, Terminator situation, and they're going to, you know, dominate and take over mankind. However, there's also an alternative of a better world where we can collaborate together with AI. Um, I would say that it is going to be inevitable as far as the transition into AGI and ASI. So we can't stop it. And I don't want to say, you know, if you can't beat them to join them. However, it is going to require adaptation. The best possible skill that anybody can have is going to be the ability to adapt and adapt quickly. And so with that, when AGI comes, when AI is able to replace any discipline, they're replacing the doctors, the lawyers, the engineers, the finance professionals, and anybody else, this is just an opportunity for everyone to be able to leverage the tools and resources that are available to them. Because the good news is that I was like to say is compute is actually a depreciating asset. So that means that we can maximize compute power, energy, resources, and opportunities at the lowest price point possible. And it's, it continues to get lower and lower. So that means that due to the exorbitant amount of access that the key is going to be education. So everybody is going to have to take what they do best, their skills. I like to call it the KSAOs, their knowledge, skills, and abilities. And the other is what you do best and what you want to do to take that and leverage it 
and apply AI to enhance it <laughs> so that you can get ahead. And so um, as an AI solutions consultant, that's actually one of the things that I do by helping people to be able to transition into AI and tech. And so I always like to say that I truly love what I do just because there are so many different disciplines out there. So finance professionals, <laughs> ed tech, health tech. And so everybody is wanting to learn exactly how they can enhance their workflows and life with AI. And so I would say that instead of focusing on Terminator, you know, doomsday, a lot of people are talking about that out there. We should focus on a better future where we're going to be able to see more prosperity and abundance than ever. However, we're not just going to, it's not just going to be handed to us. We're going to have to have conversations with our government <laughs> and come together as a collective yeah. um, to be able to make it happen. I love the question. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, hopefully the boomers are out of here. Really, really, <laughs> you know, we don't have one less problem we can worry about, but thank you. Uh, I appreciate your time, Ashley. Uh, this was very insightful. Uh, I hope I, I'm, I learned a lot. I'm going to have to watch this back myself, but um, do you have any last words or anything you want to tell the public or tell the viewer uh, why they should use AI or rush, they should get into AI. So I'd say, you know, if you want to get ahead, if you want to win, if you want to prepare your future children and generations to succeed and thrive, then AI is going to need to be the focus. And so there is a lot of pushback because it is going to require a learning curve. However, like I said, you know, AGI is inevitable. ASI is inevitable. And so eventually in the future, like the AI, um, the iRobot future where robots are walking around smarter than humans, this is where we're all going to need to prepare ourselves properly. So, you know, I say that my message to the world will be that a better world is possible if we all come together as a collective. That's what it's going to take, but also to leverage AI in our day to day to properly prepare ourselves for what is coming because ASI is coming inevitably. Okay. And that's it. Uh, guys, go to Better Boost. The link is below. Please click that link and check it out. Ashley, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Everyone else, till next time, I'll see you.